Hey Pokey peeps, we're back at it and I've got another short video today. This time it's an overused battle, so hopefully you enjoy and let's see what we've got. As you can see guys, this is the overused team I've been using for about a week now. I really enjoy it and I really wanted to start using Nidoking a little bit more. I love it as a Pokemon, but I just never find that I'm using it. So I guess the main point of this battle that I wanted to emphasize was looking at your team matchup and making a good lead from that prediction. So obviously on the other team, he's only got one Pokemon that really threatens my Tapu Fini, and that is the Rotom. So I'm obviously gonna lead with that. So let's see how we go. Obviously we're leading with Tapu Fini here and he left with his Hydreigon, which was the least useful Pokemon on his team, at least in, con uh, in a competition with the Tapu Fini. I start setting up and then I realize I'm actually doing a fair bit of damage to this Clefable, so I keep going for it. Uh, and then I realize, oh no, he's going to be a little bit of a stall here. This is the perfect opportunity for me to start car mining up and just boosting because he's just going to stall as much as possible. And yeah, so as you can see, I'm just setting up some car mines. I get to this point, and I think, oh, I can probably two shot now, which I can but he goes for the Wish and he also has Protect, which I didn't see previously. So I then go, fine, let's keep setting up. So I set all the way up to the uh, 3.5 attack and four special defense. And then I just start to absolutely destroy with Moonblast here. As you can see, doing 92% and then just taking it out. He sends in his Dragapult and goes for a Thunder Wave. Hoping for some hacks there that I get paralyzed along the way. I end up getting flinched and I'm thinking, oh god, I'm gonna get hacks out of this game. He then gets a crit and I'm thinking, oh god, if he gets a crit and a, a flinch, I'm out of here. Uh, then he goes into his, I think it may have been a Scarfed Hydreigon, uh, and goes for a U-turn. Doesn't really do anything because he goes into Seismitoad, which goes down, and then he goes back into Hydreigon, which also goes down. As I said previously, I could see that the main Pokemon or the main threat on his team was definitely going to be that Rotom, which he really didn't use effectively. As soon as he saw me start to set up Carmines, that's when he should have brought it in. It should have been like, oh no, you're not setting up, I'm going to start smashing you. Even if he had just got a chunk of damage off to start with, that would have just left him in such a beneficial position moving forward. So even if he had gone for a discharge he had have got the paralysis and then done about 40 percent i would have been dead in this position so then he could have sent in his uh Corvic knight which this could have iron headed and then i would have been dead and we would have been in a much more even spot but because he let me get set up so much before sending in his Rotom, it did what like 12 percent with the discharge which isn't much at all and yeah that's that's the game i want you guys to focus on the leads that you guys use as the takeaway from this game. As you can see, I saw my opportunity, I took it, and that is why this game was such a blower. Alright guys, that's it for today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more content. If you are enjoying these little series, let me know, and check out some of my other videos. I'm sure you'll like them just as much. Anyways, bye!